On this week's episode of Whitetail Cribs, we're headed to West Virginia to visit with Michael Hunt. Michael is a former railroad mechanic who is now retired. He spends most of his time doing his own taxidermy and deer hunting. Get ready to see a beautiful West Virginia home with deer hunting antiques and a dream trophy whitetail room. Be sure to hit that like button and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. The Exodus team is traveling around the United States to take a look inside the trophy rooms of some of the most interesting whitetail hunters in the country. From giant bucks, unique racks, and riveting stories, welcome to Whitetail Cribs. Come on in. Welcome to my home. My name is Michael. The home, nice open floor plan, living room, kitchen. I'm going to do it quick. Come on back to the hall this way. Yeah. Sometimes the action takes place in here, but I got a few little cool things in the bedroom. I did this little lamp deer and the, the hooves were white on it. Uh, I actually made that. And then over here, I got a um, few guns, couple gun cases in here. I got my wife to do, uh, actually go hunting for the first time this year. And here's the casing. She shot a, uh, her first buck ever, first deer ever. And we'll show it to you after a while. And then uh, I'm into the history of hunting. Cool little thing here is I got a U.S. Springfield 1863 used in the Civil War. It was a um, top breech for a lot of people who don't know. You just open it up. You slide the shell in. Close the back and you were ready to fire. Nice, nice little thing. When I got the gun, I actually got the holder. The guy's initials was in the back of it. And you can see here, I mean, it was just a chunk of lead in that. And you just shoved it in that gun. And, but that's what they did. They, U.S. infantry, and they just carried it on their sides. So I like learning the history of the hunting and guns and different things like that. Come on this way. Go into the, wife's got a real nice dining room here we got. She likes decorating some. Then our open kitchen. And of course everyone, we got a granddaughter. Gotta have Minnie Mouse and Goofy on the side. And I know everyone wants to look in the refrigerators. There ain't a whole lot. A few drinks. A little bit of liquor there. But over on this side, a little bit of deer meat, bear meat. If we can't kill it, grow it, or pick it, we ain't eating it. Anyway, come on through. We got uh, the open floor plan here in the living room. I just did this wall. We always take a little project and uh, every winter and I try to improve on things. So we did some metal barn roofing and some old barn lumber. I built a TV stand and I got a few sheds up here I'll show you. My wife also found her first shed this year. We was out in Indiana and that's her very first one. And she, uh, She's doing good this year. Shot her first deer, first shed. She even found a deadhead in her first one. But this deer here, you can see here, this thing, we were hunting this deer, me and a buddy of mine. This, and actually, this I had this scored, officially scored. It's 96 and 6 eighths. And it, this was about four or four more inches and the drop time was a inch or so longer it would have been over 100 inches 
The neighbor guy killed it the following year. It was 177, but it's it's impressive. And then uh, I had a deer farm at one time, and these are from a raised deer, uh, but they are impressive. I mean, that was a two-year-old deer, so still pretty cool to be up there on the shelf and you gotta throw in my granddaughter's deer she's gotta have one <laughs> so come on back this way my son i got uh, a uh, son and two daughters yeah uh, we'll take a look in there bathroom one you got some cool little animals up on top wallpaper when my granddaughter comes, she gets her own little room. And we got another little spare room back in here, a couple beds. My son's room, he <clears throat> ain't into hunting a lot now, but we got about 50 acres here. And when he did hunt, he's killed a couple deer here, right off our property. And he shot these with his bow. He shot this one over here with a, um, it's a real nice eight point. Uh, he shot it with a rifle. It turned out really nice. I was in Ohio and he called and he, he was up on the hill hunting by himself. And he's like, uh, I shot one, I shot one. I was like, well, ain't nothing I can do. So he called his grandpa and he'd come over and had to help him get it out. He was all excited, but he's into working and making money now. Come on out this way. All right, this is what you're here for. Come on in. It's a, uh, I put a lot of work into this room. I've done it all myself. I do my own taxidermy work. I did all the woodworking. I've done all the lighting fixtures. I've done it all in here. I didn't start trophy hunting until 2007. I didn't, didn't even know. You know, when I grew up, uh, you shot you shot it for me. It was brown, it was down. So I started getting into history of deer hunting. And, and to bring that in perspective, I'm going to show you a cool few little things here. We got some pictures. This one is out of... Michigan, when they did deer processing, they brought them in on rail cars. So the, the new thing for me and the wife is to go to the antique stores and try to find some of this stuff. It's like a big treasure hunt. And you, of course, you got your old uh, uh, ammunition paper boxes, but back in the day, they came in wooden crates for Remington Arms Company. And then, um, you know, they even made the paper cardboard shells. And, you know, a lot of guys, you know, today's generation didn't know nothing about them. And then if you're into sports and old photos, here's the, the bear itself, Babe Ruth. And that old photo, they got a bear, a couple deer on this old Model 8. So, it's pretty neat. And then you get into some of the old license. We started, I started picking them up as we found them in 1916, North Dakota. I was reading on the back of it. You weren't even allowed to kill any big game animals until 1920, uh, at least in South Dakota, or yes, yeah, South Dakota. It was a uh, fine and up to 50 days in jail. And you read the back of it, it actually talks about um, uh, the birds is pretty much all you could shoot back then. You got some of these old license. People don't know that 
you know, the, they used to come in a button form, 1947, Pennsylvania. And then they had a bunch of sportsmen's clubs, but that you had to display all these if you went fishing or hunting. Then they went to paper. Then you had to wear this on your back. This is 51. And actually, that one's mine, that doe tag in 1985. You had to put in for them. And then um, what, uh, some of the fence, you can see some of the bigger sheds. We like shed hunting. If you're into deer hunting, everyone likes to shed hunt. There's some good sheds in there. Let's start over here. I'll start with how they go in order. No, let's, I, I, let's go back over here. The heck with it. Come on. Here's my very first one I ever shot. I thought it was a big one. I shot it in West Virginia. That was in uh, 2007. I had no idea what a big deer was. My buddy kind of laughed, and he's like, hey, I didn't know. So the next year, I learned what a pooping young buck was. And needless to say, here he is. <laughs> that was the first one I ever killed with a bow. And in 2008, scores 153 inches. It shocked me. When it came in, I actually drew on it, and um, I hit it in the rear. <laughs> I didn't even know if I killed it or what. We went back to the camp, got a couple of buddies. We went and found it, and uh, it ended, in a, ended up being way bigger than what I even knew what 125 inches was. And then the next year, I killed this one in West Virginia. Uh, let's just follow this line. Right here is my... I showed you the cartridge earlier. This is my wife's first deer ever. She shot it this year right here on our place. Uh, and of course, I do my taxidermy work. And I had to do it first. I mean, or I was getting in trouble if I didn't get it in here. Now she wants her own walls. So uh, we'll work on that. <laughs> uh, let's start right here. We... I killed this one in Indiana two years ago. Um, I knew the deer. It was um, six and a half years old. And I've been going to Indiana for five years. I got a buddy that owns, uh, it's called Triple O Outfitters. Uh, I go down, I help him. But we knew the history of the deer. <clears throat> and actually I got the sheds right here off this deer. And I found him the same year that I killed him. I didn't find him the year before. So I was pretty excited to shoot that deer. And then uh, we'll show you another one from Indiana. We called him Paddles. It's this deer right here, real wide. We had him on a farm and uh, no one could figure out how to hunt him, and that was the first year down. And uh, it was a big timbered section. And I actually obtained permission to come in the back door, and I came in there, and I was just going to observe. There was a little old stand in there. So what I did, I mean, there was 12 foot off the ground I got in it. And I had these deer come by kind of where I wanted to put the stand and this deer gets up out of its bed 60 yards away comes right to me and I'm videoing and I, I actually get it on video I shoot this deer and we go back the next day and struggle trying to find him it was early and uh, I was ready to give up my buddy made one last loop and found him but uh, it was a good deer then uh, we'll just stick with Indiana. Here's my biggest deer ever. It is 203 inches. Now I shot it down there on him too. And actually this is a replica. You guys can't tell, but I'll give you a close up. Here's the real one. He's 203 and 6 eighths. He is impressive. The, um, 
And this deer the year before, believe it or not, only one had one antler on this side, and this rack was about half this size. He, um, I was fortunate enough to harvest him. Uh, I knew a lot about the deer. Um, I got, I actually got a picture. I'm gonna show you real quick. And actually, here's the picture of the deer the year before. You can see the one side. So when they say management deer, don't shoot them. At least give them another year to see if he uh, recovers. <laughs> I'm glad we gave him another year. That was it for Indiana. I've killed the three down there. Uh, here's my velvet buck. I killed this two years ago. It scores 153 inches. I shot it in Kentucky. Actually got a little drop time. A couple uh, kickers off the front. It um, First velvet buck. I set out to shoot a Pope and Young uh, velvet buck, but it ended up being 153. I was tickled to death. Uh, we'll go to Ohio, right here, 128. Um, that was the first one I ever shot with a muzzleloader. Um, it wasn't. Uh, it was pretty big. That was the second one I ever killed. That uh, I killed it after the. My first one uh, in Ohio. And then I killed this one right here. It scores a 162. I shot it in Ohio. Uh, we had a place. Actually, you could see the tree I was in from the... Um, we rented a trailer up there. And basically in the backyard of this farmer... He came in, he had a broken jaw. Uh, we had a lot of troll camera pictures and uh, early velvet video footage of him in, in some fields. And then I killed this one also in Ohio. We loved him. He had big brow times on him. There ain't a whole lot of story. I mean, I was there and uh, got in a tree. My buddy told me to get in and, I mean, he come walking by. Uh, so, now this one I did real good with. I sh it came out of Ohio also. But actually, we started running some cell cameras. And I seen him the day before. Well, I've been watching him all week back here in West Virginia. Uh, technology is great. Uh, but he came in, and I actually uh, got him on video, uh, self videos. Some guys didn't believe. I went back to the camp and told them I shot him, and they're like, no, no. And I was like, yeah, come on. And uh, they were shocked when they got up on him and uh, how big he was. And he scored 153. And then I killed this one also in Ohio. We had a lease up there. And that was just a few years ago, and I done killed. We had some guys in our lease at never killed a Pope and Young, and I tried, I was like, go hunt him, and no one would go up there and try to hunt him, so I went in, and same way, cell cameras again, I had him come in two nights in a row, third night I was in the tree, he came right in, worked a scrape, I shot him, he went about 60 yards, but it's hard getting him out by yourself. Uh, I got one here, a big one out of West Virginia, I shot it with a rifle, it's got a little kicker on the side. Uh, you get uh, you get some good deer in West Virginia every once in a while. That scores 142. We hunt in Kansas. The first year we ever went out there, this buck right here. Me and my buddy went out there. And we go out there and the uh, he shoots one the second day in. And well, the first day in we go in. I drop him off. I go to pick him back up that evening. My truck wouldn't move. I'm like, oh, man. And he comes out. I was like, we're in trouble. I was like, I put this truck in drive, and it wouldn't move. I was like, my transmission's out. I mean, this is the first evening in Kansas. So finally, I get, we get back to the motel we're staying in, and I call the insurance company, and they 
luckily my insurance covers rental car so we call avis and they're like oh i need an suv or truck or something they're like we don't have one the only thing we have is a little car i was like well i'm you know we're hunting they're like just get extra insurance so we get extra insurance and they bring his car to the Super 8, and it's a little Kia Rio. I was like, are you kidding me? <laughs> so the next day, we get this little Kia Rio to hunt in. I go drop my buddy off. The very next day, he shoots his deer. And so we're like, what do we do? You know, we, we have no idea what to do. I'm like, I got insurance. Let's shove this thing in a trunk. So I drive his car out to this cornfield, and... Man, I shove this, we get this deer up in this trunk of this car, and it was bad. We couldn't get the trunk closed, its feet's hanging out, the head's hanging out, and we're driving through town, people's looking at us and laughing, and finally we found someone to tell us where there's a deer processor. So we go to this deer processor, and the guy comes out, and he's just laughing. And so we tell him the whole situation, here his buddy has a, owns a transmission shop we're like well yeah you know we're we're good so finally we get the truck at the transmission shop and he's like yeah we can we can get it fixed up it take about three weeks we're like no we're leaving by friday you know we, we got six days so we keep hunting and you know this guy fixed he ends up fixing the truck the third day in i just go back to the same stand my buddy's hunting in well I shot this deer on the on the fourth day. And uh, once again, you know, we drive this little Kia out in the cornfield. We load him up in the car. and Same way, we couldn't close the trunk or anything like that. And there's blood everywhere. And we uh, take him over to the same deer processor. And he comes out shaking his head. He goes, you guys deserve a beer. You know, he brings us a beer. And we get our picture taken and stuff out there. But. That's how we started in Kansas, and we've been going out there for uh, nine years now. So it was a fun, fun first start, but it always gets better. Well, I, the very next year, I killed another one, and then uh, these first, these three right here are all out of Kansas, and I kind of got jinxed there. There, you know, I ain't into score antlers, but they are all three 138 inches <laughs> but the size of the deer and the taste of them are completely different out there and i go out there and my wife's like don't come home not unless we have meat from out there so i've shot does out there but and we got another one two years ago i killed in kansas finally i killed a a pretty good deer he scored 153 inches and he was with some does, and actually, when I, I had to grunt him, and he come running in off that doe, and I shot him, and he ran down the hill, and he, he fell down. And uh, there was another buck that came in and started sparring with him on the ground while he was dead. And I got a video of all that, and it was, it was pretty cool to see all that. You know, you always see it on TV and hear stories, but to actually see it, uh, it's pretty nice. But that's it. That's that's all all I've done. I wanted to show you one last little thing here in the room. Of course, we got some rams. Coyote, I mounted, I mounted him stepping on a little muskrat. But uh, got a little mink. This is me. Me and my buddy did this. We did all this trapping one year. And then, of course, the family. The son, he thought he had my deer his first deer my wife we got a cricket runs in front of the property my daughter's got one my daughter's first deer my son's first deer you got to keep the family involved or try so but boys i think it's about time for you to leave i'm going to show you to the door piece of advice though before you all you guys with your wives Love me like you love your deer season. Take that one. But it's time to go out my door. It's been fun, but see you later.